Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. Sorry I've been gone for so long. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know that I've moved from Atlanta, Georgia over to California. And well, it was quite an adventure to try to get all this machinery. Over here I had five flat tires, I think. So uh, let's just say machinery weighs a lot. So today what we're gonna talk about is putting a riser block on a milling machine. Now, I gotta say this, milling machines come and go, but riser blocks stay. This is my third milling machine, and I've kept this riser block since my first one. Now, what is a riser block? A riser block goes in between the base and the turret and rises the whole thing up so you have more capacity here. Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to install one of these. You have to have a spider. Actually, you end up having two, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But before I do that, what I want to do is check to make sure that this riser block was in good enough condition so it wasn't going to be tilted in one way or another. And since it's been off a machine for quite a while, there was little dents and stuff here, which, of course, whenever you dent steel on the corner, it rises it up. So I took a file across the top, took off any of the high spots, went in with a precision flat stone, flattened that out, made sure everything was smooth on both sides. But to make sure that it was working correctly and measured correctly, I actually put it on the surface plate and pulled out a gauge, and it's a stare at 191, as I recall. Great little back plunger, and I checked to make sure this was on, and it was dead on. It was probably within a couple tenths, which was just amazing over this. I also hinged it. Now, if you don't know what hinging is, it's one way that you check to make sure that something is flat. So if I pivot this here, and it's on a flat surface, and it's flat, it should pivot at about the third way point. Well, when you do a large surface like this, I pivoted and I didn't know what was going to happen. Well, what I found out is if I moved this end, it pivoted here. So wherever I moved it, it pivoted on the opposite side. So I'm assuming that's flat. I'm not exactly sure. I read Moore's book. I don't remember him talking about how to check to see if a cylinder surface is flat. So it must be in there someplace, but I'll take a look for it at another time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have to separate the head from the base. I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna use a forklift. It's a lot easier, you can use an engine hoist, you can use a chain hoist off the ceiling, whatever you have. But one of the things I wanna warn you about is there's a lot of weight up here. So this could tip over. I don't know, we'll, we'll lift it up, we'll see how it feels. If it doesn't feel right, we'll tie it down just to make sure it's secure. And remember, we have to be able to lift it up high enough to get the spacer block under there and also be able to work. And that's gonna be an interesting trick. So remember that, I've got a low ceiling here. We'll see what happens. Uh, the new shop is working out really great. I've got, I think around, I wanna say around 900 square feet, as I recall, a little bit bigger than my basement back in Atlanta. It's a nice space, but I gotta say, I keep buying things on Craigslist and it keeps filling in. So I'm having a little difficult time. So let's bring over the forklift, raise this thing up, see what happens. I'm gonna move the table in just so we have a little more workspace. So the surface of this actually looks really good. The bottom here looks really good. I think what I need to do is just clean it up and uh, put it together. Okay, the trick now is to try to get the spider in place, and it kind of fits. It's actually not square, so it's actually longer one way than the other. And we're going to make it so the webbing goes down, and these machine surfaces actually go up because this is the clamp. We have the spider in place, now we're ready to put the riser block in, 
and then it has its own spider, but that's step two. It's really tricky and really hard to get everything lined up. Now the bolts on the bottom are shorter. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees so when I drop this down, this spider is going to line up. Okay, with that spider in place, we're going to lower this down. The trick is getting everything lined up. We'll just play it by ear and see what happens. Now, in theory, this should drop and stop. Do that. That means I'm really close to the lineup. Let's see if we can rotate this. There we go. Now, before we screw that in too far, we want to make sure all four bolts go in. So if the bolt wouldn't have stopped, that meant the spider was out of alignment. The riser block is now in place and it looks fantastic. Now, I did take some time and paint this. Now, I'll admit I didn't do a great paint job because I plan to redo the whole machine, but I just want to get it temporary. And I got to say, it looks so nice. I, I got to get this thing painted quickly. But let's talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages to setting up a riser block. Now, a lot of people will say that you lose your capacity here because technically a milling machine Without the riser block, the quill should touch the table or come really close to it. But you forget that you always have a cutter in there and you always have material. Unless you're having your cutter out a quarter of an inch and you're working on sheet metal, this distance here, how do I want to say, doesn't need to be that tight. Other things is I probably do, I'd say 95% of my work is done in a vise. And you can see, actually, if I raise this all the way up, my vice almost hits this. Actually, let's do that. Okay, now you can see how much capacity I have. The quill can come down. So with the Jacobs 14N chuck in here, I am just about 5 eighths of an inch away. But you can see with the vice, I've got plenty of room. And like I said, I've never come to this situation where this gap caused me problems. And if it ever really did come down to that, I can put a surface block in here, clamp off of that, work from there. But the other advantage is I can put all sorts of different devices in here and not be limited. Like I said before, if you wanted to put in, let's say, a tapping head, they're really tall. I also have a special grinding attachment. That's really tall. If I wanted to put a super spacer in here or a rotary table and that's the advantage this gives me. It gives me so much more ability. Plus one of the other bonuses is I get to work at this machine at standing height, which is a great advantage. Now, there are a couple disadvantages. One is, well, do I want to say it's a disadvantage? We're going to say it's a disadvantage, but we're going to turn it into advantage is to get to the drawbar. It's really high up here, but let's turn this into an advantage and also another video. I want to make a power drawbar for this. So once I do that, I'll have the handle down here. So that's not even going to be a disadvantage. I really enjoy just having this riser block. Like I said, this is my third milling machine to put it on. And I will always have it on my Bridgeport milling machine. Now, I did have it on an Enco. Everything matched up. I can't guarantee if you have a, a Bridgeport riser block and it'll fit on other machines. I don't know. I know some people have talked about uh, building one of these. I think you could, but they're only used about $300, $400. I think it'd be a lot of work to build one. Plus, I like that it's out of cast and not some sort of steel. 
Cast has a rigidity and it comes back to its natural state very quickly where steel, you know, it can bend and fold and kind of get manipulated after a time. Cast iron or cast steel just works so much better. So I hope you guys are inspired about possibly putting one of these on your machine. Anything's gonna be better than nothing in my opinion. If you wanna see what I'm doing in the shop, you can join me on Instagram and Facebook down below. There's some links. Also, you can look at the trip that I drove across the country, multiple trips to get this machine right here. Kind of an exciting adventure from flat tires to fires to, well, I got in trouble with, um, well, you guys will just have to check it out on Instagram and Facebook and see where I'm at. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and want to see more content. Like I said, I'm now trying to get back to full time on YouTube since the shop is mostly set up. All right, guys, until next time, go out in your shop and build something cool. Thanks.